Um, this is such an important concept and it's misunderstood by a lot of low carb folks. There is no such thing as insulin resistance without hyperinsulinemia. That's very important because there are some instances called physiological insulin resistance, where the body has become insulin resistant to serve a valuable purpose. And overwhelmingly, that's growth. And that's why you only have physiological insulin resistance in two situations, pregnancy and puberty, because those are the two periods of rampant growth in a human, in the adolescent or in the adult female, of course. Regardless whether it's harmful insulin resistance, like I study in my lab, the kind that's connected to Alzheimer's, et cetera, or whether it's physiological insulin resistance, when the bodies become insulin resistant for a period of time on purpose, it still is both of these aspects. It's insulin is altered in how it's working and blood insulin levels are elevated. In other words, hyperinsulinemia. And a perfect example of this, Anthony, when we, when we look at these two sides of the coin, it's to look at the two most common forms of infertility in males and females. Specifically, I mean erectile dysfunction and polycystic ovary syndrome, respectively. And in erectile dysfunction, it's a problem of the insulin resistance part of this coin, side of the coin, which is that insulin isn't able to promote sufficient vasodilation in the man anymore. And so not only does he have probably elevated blood pressure, but if you can't dilate blood vessels, you don't have normal erectile function. And thus it's the insulin resistance that's contributing to the male form of infertility, the most common. In stark contrast, in the female, it's not the problem of compromised insulin signaling. It's more a problem of the hyperinsulinemia because at her ovaries, she has cells in her ovaries that are capable of rapidly converting testosterone into estrogens. And that's a little known fact. All estrogens were once testosterone and the ovaries convert that over very, very well at a much higher rate than the testes do in men. However, insulin inhibits that conversion. And so as she's insulin resistant and her insulin levels are higher, that has a specific effect at the ovaries where it's the elevated insulin, not the insulin resistance per se, that is preventing her ovaries from converting the testosterone into estrogens at a high enough amount. Now her testosterone's too high, her estrogens are too low, and then she has polycystic ovary syndrome. She isn't ovulating, she may have more coarse body hair, and so on.